But was that at Hong Kong University with both a BA and a Master of Philosophy, and received a Master from Columbia, <coughs> and then uh, his PhD was done at the uh, University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill uh, in 1997. So after that, he spent two years in Rochester and came to Taiwan. I can't use the word return, right? <laughs> he came to Taiwan <coughs> in 1999 uh, as a postdoc to Academia Seneca, <coughs> staying there until 2001, where in 2001 he was this uh, Academia Seneca fellow, which is uh, <coughs> uh, Academia Seneca wide, not just their IOP. <coughs> um, so he went to NCU as assistant professor. <coughs> Huh? <laughs> what? If, if you mess with that, we will pay them. The, the, the fellowship at, at, at academic center can pay more than the Oh, pay more. Uh, well, probably more important. <laughs> <laughs> so, do they pay more than the assistant professor? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. <clears throat> but uh, probably the title and the assistant student. So, he became a social professor in 2005, <clears throat> and since 2008, he became famous as a not quite professor. Oh, I would not fully really explain that until, unless Professor Kong wants to explain it. It's okay. Um, as far as I know, you know, you know I've known him. As, I, I've known him since uh, his existence, since he was a student. I noticed the name, and I know Otto, or Professor Kong, as an opinionated person with his own very special taste, and I think today we'll get a slice of it. Mm -hmm. So, Otto, floor is yours, fermions, derived versus non -derived. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Very glad to give a talk here again at NTU, thanks to George's invitation. Uh, as I was telling him, uh, well, first of all, maybe I should apologize. I'm, this title here uh, may not be very good or may not be very well put at all because I actually haven't thought about it very carefully. Uh, the content of this talk actually mostly composed of two more or less independent parts, uh, but they are all about uh, fermions, Dirac uh, fermion, Maturana fermion. Uh, and the first part is going to be like supposedly textbook level material. But uh, at least in my experience, things that are not at all well presented in textbooks. Uh, and the second part would be only a very brief summary. It depends on you know, how much people get interested. Uh, anyway, it would be, the second part would be a very brief summary on uh, sort of uh, Dirac Metron mass generation in Model the dynamical symmetry plane came on came on recently. Okay. Now the first part is, of course, the first part is, as I say, is mostly on its like textbook level material. So let me see how should I start. Let me put it this way. Okay. So you read most of the most of all, you know, the common quantum field theory textbooks about fermion fermion fields in that sense, and you may get the following impression. The first thing would be like, there are three kinds of fermions, the Dirac fermion, the Maturana fermion, and the Wild fermion. Uh, the Maturana fermion being real or self conjugate the Wild fermion would be massless. Now the second kind of impression you'll get is like, uh, uh, you could think about a number of Dirac fermions with possible mass mixing, and you can get to a Dirac fermion, Dirac mass matrix. Or you can do a similar thing with Maturana fermion, you end up with Maturana mass matrix. And as so, of course, the Dirac and uh, Maturana mass matrices are Hermitian. Of course, with the Maturana case, you, uh, because it's real, so it's, the, the mass matrix is symmetric. So, if hearing all this, uh, when I say general impression, you will get from quantum field theory textbooks, and you feel, yeah, it's all okay, well, then that should be something very interesting for you here. Now, if you will say, wait a minute, there seems to be something not quite right here, okay, then okay, you are more 
you're more uh, uh, enlightened, I would say. But then the question is, do you really appreciate the complete story behind it when we're done? No, you know, I thought I realized, I understand that well for years, but uh, something inspired me to uh, work it out in detail recently. And while working it out, I think I myself learned something from it. So hopefully, you will all uh, see something interesting or even new here. Okay. So we can start with the following. Some puzzling questions. The first two, actually. The first question that asks a lot, especially by experimentalists, are neutrinos metronal or derived? OK? Uh, I myself have been actually for something like 15 years saying this is sort of a wrong question to ask, wrong and misleading question to ask. Why I'm saying that? Uh, this is part of the story, and as I have put here, in fact, do we really answer that question? Of course, you'll think we'll answer that experimentally by detecting the property of neutrinos. Not quite yet. You really have to think about what do we really mean by metronal or drop particles. Do you think you all know what we mean by metronal or drop particles? Not quite. There is some serious ambiguity behind it. But that's don't what underestimate the hmm? smart kids here. Don't underestimate the smart kids here. Smart kids? You're challenging everyone. Do you really understand? Oh, no, 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 that? no. I'm not. What? <clears throat> I, I don't. I, I, I certainly don't have no intention to underestimate every, anybody. I'm just. I want to put a provoking statement. I want uh, everybody to think about those issues. Uh, at least deeper than what you see usually in quantum, the quantum field theory textbooks. Of course, if you already appreciate it well or better than me here, uh, that would be great. That would be great. Okay. But if you haven't thought about that question, or if you like, when I put a question like that and you say, "Oh, I don't exactly know what you want to talk about," well, then there is certainly something for you to look at. Yeah, seriously, that's the whole point. Okay. Now, the second related question, I pretty much said it. Uh, why is, well, this is actually a question that I asked, for example, as uh, well, George mentioning about Rochester, you know. I went to Rochester as a postdoc, and, uh, you know, the great Okubo was on the Rochester faculty. Uh, but by the time I was at Rochester, Okubo was uh, basically retired. He showed up sometimes in the department. So I regret a lot. I don't got a chance to talk to Okubo. Now there I was giving my first seminar in Rochester, and Okubo was in the audience. The first question he asked me, why is the mass matrix I present not symmetric? I got completely stunned. I mean, come on. Why should the mass matrix be symmetric? That was the answer in my heart. Of course, I didn't dare to say that in front of Okubo, but I was like, feeling very uncomfortable. But then, of course, you know, I just, just told you, right? If you look at quantum field field textbook and think about metronomic mass and Dirac mass, the mass matrix, of course it will be homage. That, that might not be which the textbook in the other case. I think so maybe you have been. Well, 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 well no, no, I, says, uh, uh, no. Otherwise. No. The way I put it was, the way I put it was, if you look at, the quantum field theory textbook about talking about Fermi fields, you will get the impression that this match matrix are a matrix symmetric. And I told you why already, because in the video, the rock mass term there is real and positive. Individual metron mass term are real and positive. The uh, Lagrangian density with a Dirac Fermi or Metron Fermi is Hermitian with a Hermitian mass term. So if you put in a field of this Dirac fermion or Majorana fermion and compose mass yeah, matrix, of course it would be Besides my question, mm -hmm. which textbook you are talking about? I think there's a lot of them just that no, otherwise. Which textbook are you talking about? Yeah, that's a, did you say the textbook to say my other math, uh, math no, 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 the no, real no. and the symmetric, uh, and the textbook to say the right I'm sorry, I'm not. Mission. Well, none of the books don't see that. I guess I, I'm not putting it there carefully here, but I, as I said, 
I didn't say quantum field theory textbook say so. I say if you read quantum field theory textbook presenting about the Metalona Fermin field, the Rock Fermin field, you will get such an impression. Correct. That's a different statement. So That's a different statement, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Very different. I, I, well, I don't know if, this, if maybe this is my thought coming, but I, I never put complete sentence in my transcendences, okay? I just try to bring out points. Okay. Now, uh, okay, let's see. Uh, oh. The key point here in the whole presentation here is to look at things, uh, look at, in that sense, wild fermions. Two spinners, okay? Two spinners. And I'm looking at all those mass terms using two spinners, while basic quantum field theory textbook is telling you what a wild fermion described by a two spinner is a massless thing. Now, the more modern quantum field theory textbooks would show you something like this. A Dirac force spinner, it can really be thought of as two, this psi and chi, two independent uh, two spinners, or wild spinners if you like, okay? Uh, and I'm putting it in a little bit more specific way, not so commonly seen in quantum field theory textbook because uh, my psi and chi here are both left-handed spinners, both left-handed, okay? Now, of course, if you go to this form, this is really like a charge conjugate of chi. Well, that guy is a right hand, that guy transforms as a right-hand spinner, okay? So this is like the left-hand part of the drug spinner, this is the right-hand part of the drug spinner, of course, this is chiral representation. Now, then, of course, you get this structure here because, of course, there is a gamma zero in the uh, capital psi bar definition. This is uh, capital psi mega multiplied by gamma zero. Okay? Now, a good reason of thinking about in terms of this chiral spinners is from the light in the standard model, where you start with all chiral spinners. Uh, which, from which no mass term can be composed without violating the gauge symmetries. And then you have new power interactions. When the Higgs field, the Higgs stuff, the general working expectation value, you get the electric weak symmetry breaking, and you retrieve Fermi mass term only after that. In fact, you also retrieve the rock Fermi only after that. Okay? Now this, you just work on the mathematics here, you got Okay, this can be written in this form, and uh, I mentioned already, this combination is really the charge conjugate of the uh, chi field. Now, this there's two mesh terms. If I just look at one of them, it can be actually written in a very compact way, and this is what it looks like. Okay? Here, I'm talking about, this is like an expression of some dot product between two spinner fields. Uh, you have to contract the spin indices appropriately. Uh, this is, for example, exactly the notation that's used in Wesen Bagger. Wesen Bagger is like classic supersymmetry text. Uh, we're not exactly talking about supersymmetry here, but uh, you'll see actually uh, in the uh, supersymmetry theory, Presentation is actually it actually is only directly compatible with this very modern uh, chiral spinner form of uh, presentation for uh, Fermi fields. Okay, so this term let's see this term is exactly this. Term. It is not Hermitian in itself, not at all. Of course, the Lagrangian density will consist of this part plus the Hermitian quantity. For those who know supersymmetry. This part would be coming from the so-called superpotential, which, which is holomorphic. Uh, and the Hermitian conjugate would be in the other part. The, the superpotential is leave on the so-called chiral superspace, and the Hermitian conjugate counterpart leave in the anti-chiral anti superspace. Okay. So uh, now, having appreciated that, we can go further. 
Now, I mentioned that already. In the standard model, you have all of them in the field being wild spinners without admissible mass term to start with. All you have are like things like the carbon interaction, which after inserting the vacuum expected, the symmetry plating vacuum expectation value, give you uh, give you mass terms. And the mass term will be exactly in this form. Okay? With both psi and chi here being left hand spinners. At least it can be written this way. Okay. So what would be and, and this is, as you can see here, this M is really a Dirac mass. So I'm writing a Dirac mass term, not using Dirac spinner, using so the wow spinners or, or you know, uh, left-handed two component spinners. Now, the Dirac mass matrix of, for example, up sector quarks, down sector quarks, charged leptons, as given in the free frame standard model, is this matrix. Okay, you have three side, three chi's, and then put together nine possible terms of the Mij, and all that nine terms together is your Dirac mass matrix. And that Dirac mass matrix, of course, is not a matrix. Okay? So there's a bit more here. When we talk about the Dirac mass matrix, there could be two different meanings. A direct one would be the Hermitian mass matrix among a few Dirac fermions that would follow directly from the quantum field theory textbook presentation of Dirac fermions. But this is hardly useful. You don't get anything like that, for example, in the standard model. What you have in the standard model is, as I mentioned, for example here, for the charged lepton part, three uh, charged leptons, these are the left-hand part, or you know, part of the SU2 multiplet, together with three, uh, I put it as left-handed, positive charge pyrothermines. These are from SU2 singlet, which sees no weak interaction, and you put together a nine by nine matrix. This matrix is complex, symmetric. Of course, it's symmetric. Yeah, yes, can be seen in this basic mathematical structure. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. No, yes, 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 no problem. Yeah. So this is complex. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, this, this is actually a a typo here, I almost missed that button. Uh, this mass matrix is not symmetric because Mij, the I index, refer to the different chi's, the J index refer to the different psi. I'm taking the psi and chi from two different sets of chirofermions. If I take them from the same set and compose a mass matrix, that would be complex symmetric. But the Dirac mass matrix as such is not, so this word should be deleted here. It's just complex, it's not symmetric. But this year, the Majoran nature has not come into play at, at all. Not to this point, yeah. So, well, as you're asking, so I may as well address that. If you think about, for example, where I have three sides, three guys, I have two all together, six fermionic fields, and I write them all as, say, side one to six, and I put together, write together all possible 36 mass terms in the mass matrix, that mass matrix would be called the Majorana mass matrix of the six fermionic states. Okay? And again, that Majorana mass matrix is not a mass matrix of a number of Majorana fermions. Okay, not yet, at least. Like, like what you do about it. And that mass matrix would be complex symmetric. And it, it, it has a little disagree with your first statement. Which thing? Yeah, statement. Uh, Hermitian mass matrix is for MD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in a standard model, you're talking about a standard model, right? Yeah. So in a standard model, since there's no right-handed uh, interaction, you can always uh, make a uh, rotation on the right-handed uh, neutrinos if you introduce a right-handed neutrino. Then you can always make a... Uh, no, I'm not going to neutrino uh, yet, actually. Non, <laughs> non unit, uh, no, I know what you're talking about, you pick. One thing is, Oh, oh, okay, so, uh, yeah. From, I so start with the, 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 the neutrino. Uh, fermions, because of the even quarks, they don't have a right-handed interaction, so you can always make a, a rotation on the mass matrix as such that at the end, you can get a, a, a Hermitian mass, 
uh, mathematic support quarks. It's, it's, it's a, always a, a positive work. Uh, this is a, a, in fact, what I would show you is something that matrix met exactly to that. Simple enough. Mm. You you take this mass matrix, which is not a matrix, you diagonalize it. Okay? You find the, the mass hiding space. For the mass hiding space, of course, the map you will get real and positive mass hiding value always. Mm. And for the mass hiding state, now you can put the mass to the hiding space side and the corresponding mass hiding state chi, you can pair them up to form the Dirac spin. But exactly for that reason, Dirac spin are really for mass hiding state only. Okay? And the thing you, you talk about there is exactly the rotation to diagonalize the, the chi part. What Xiao Gang brought out? Okay. The, thing, the, 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 the extra thing is the extra thing is of course in the standard model experimental physics, we can't see the, 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 the physics in that notation here. That has no experimental trace at all. So in that sense, you can regard it, okay? But, well, as, as a field is looking at the whole thing, I, I prefer to think about like, what is the standard model? You look at symmetry, you look at the, the fermionic content, for example, which is pretty much dictated by anomaly cancellation. And then you uh, write down all the possible renormalizable uh, operators admissible by the gauge symmetry, and that's your Lagrangian density. So in that, if you're doing that, you have no right to, to make that restriction. That's a lot of statement. Mm -hmm. The last statement, I don't you already said it before, all, all right, the last statement, because this is a irreducible, or the, uh, you make it a uh, mission, it's a sort of the irreducible, uh, so you cannot do anything more. So the, all the other things is just the redefinition of a field, the, the uh, phases or whatever. Uh, so what is the, the final is the physical observable quantity is important. So in that case, you can always make it uh, a mission. You have to write down the full Lagrangian before you can tell. Well, so you have so to write down the full Lagrangian first, so what and then you write down the rotation instead. So then you say you cannot do it, and then you say uh, misleading statement. And so, but uh, what I what I really want to bring to you guys, of course, is the appreciation that, especially like you can even think about beyond standard model. So generically speaking. This is the kind of mass matrix you, we, we should be interested in. Yeah, if you go beyond and then you have to go and you have to go to you really have to go to look for mass hiding states before you can pair the two spinners together to describe what you call Dirac Fermi. Okay. Well, if you look, you, you so looking at things at this level is quite useless. Now, well. Most of you should be familiar with it, but if you don't, uh, of course, this diagonalizing rotation is a bi unitary rotation. You do unitary rotation of the doublet part and the singlet part separately, okay? Uh, and you can get to uh, real and positive eigenvalues, okay? Only after that you match to get the Dirac okay. Now, Now, I'm going to do the Maturana part and especially thinking about neutrinos. Because in the case of neutrino, well, also, I should say, especially illustrated by the neutrino, this thing is even more messy than you, you may want. Okay? So, Xiao Gang has urged us to do that already. Looking at this, this form of mass matrix, you should be able to think about like psi psi and chi chi too, generally speaking. And this is, of course, exactly true for the neutrinos. Uh, and that would be, like if I think about one, one side, one two spinner, so I have an m side dot psi mesh tail. That would be called, of course, a Maturana mesh tail. And what is your Maturana four spinner? Is is this guy? Maturana four spinner are self conjugate. So instead of having, instead of having, instead of having a psi and a different chi, composing the four spinner. You replace this chi here by psi itself. That's the self conjugate. 
and this is geometric on the four spin in chiral representation. Okay? Or to work the other way, you can use the two spinners to expand the metronome mass term like this. Now, so now the, 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 the most important punchline of this part of the talk has been much here already. You see, for example, I can think about uh, two spinners, a xi and a chi. But now I am, I, I think about generic mass term, psi dot psi, chi dot psi, as well as chi dot chi. And I'll have two by two matrix. And that would be, generally speaking, called metronome mass matrix. You can, of course, diagonalize it and get two mass eigenstates. And then you can, for each of the mass eigenstates, you can write your metronome force space. And you can cast we class all the mass term in terms of mass term for just two mass hiding state metal on the uh, families. Uh, what would the Dirac case correspond to then? Well, Dirac case would be the case when the off diagonal entries are zero. When, they, when, when the chi dot chi and psi dot psi mass is zero, then you have only the psi dot chi and you get back to the Dirac picture. However, if I just look at this, as a two by two mass matrix, generally speaking, I can I, I, I can stay away from worrying about what are the matrix entries, whether the off the off diagonal entries, whether the diagonal entry is a zero. I can not worry about that for the moment, and say whatever the mass matrix entry is, I can diagonalize it and get to mass hiding states. Yes, of course you can do that, and if you do that you will get to, according to what I just described, two metronome mass uh, fermions. Okay, so if I do that exactly for the structure where it's completely off diagonal, where early on we say it's a Dirac Fermi, what happens? You have a mass matrix which is zero, M, M, zero. It is, well, at least for, for M being real here, uh, you will, you, you, you can diagonalize it to get two mass hiding values, which are of course the same. You have degenerate, you have a twofold degenerate mass hiding value. Okay? So that is the basic punchline here. One Dirac mass term, at least mathematically, is really completely equivalent to two degenerate metronome mass term. Okay? So that's the one huge ambiguity that you think. If, if, I, if I haven't shown you all this thing to start with and just give you that statement, then you'll say, what are you talking about? And that's exactly based on that kind of statement I'm saying the question of, about uh, neutrinos, the rock or metron, the particle is really a very ambiguous question. What do we mean by that the rock metron, the particle? It can be described both ways, actually. Is that okay? Not okay. <laughs> what is not okay? Yeah. So in the uh, uh, standard model, you can mm -hmm. define neutrino some lepton number. My other mass uh, violates the lepton number by unit of But why should I have lepton number? But you don't have to. But then you can um, define your uh, theory. It ha has some growth or so, symmetry there. Uh, no. Uh, no, I don't see but, it. But this is different than what people talk about the no. mass. You no. don't have this uh, 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 diagonal entries. You only have the off diagonal entries. That statement, and then it's okay. But then that does not have anything to do with uh, um, my own neutrino. Is is um, anti particle? That statement is not okay. No, 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 no. no. Uh, as I'm actually showing it here. Okay. Now you can think about this two two fermions. One as one of the standard model neutrino. Namely, a guy coming from a natural to a doublet. The other part is the so-called right-hand neutrino in field. I, I, I myself don't use that name at all. I think it's a misleading name. As I show you, I'm only using left-hand spinner to write things. And I think that's the best way to do it for standard model particles. So I call this guy singlet neutrino. It comes from natural to a singlet. 
that's what maps to the so-called right-hand quadset and charge leptons. Sterile. Okay. <laughs> well, it could be sterile. Yeah, it's the same kind of thing, actually. Sterile neutrino is not something different from right-hand neutrino. They have, they, are, they, they have no quantum number, no standard model quantum number. So you, <coughs> then you know what you are, you don't have to read this statement that uh, neutrino is probably not decaying, is able to tell whether the neutrino is the uh, And That not statement is actually is not a correct statement. But, <coughs> no, that's what, I, I, I said again, that you are not, not uh, uh, no, no, understanding no, 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 no. what uh, really my own Please, so give me a little bit of patience. You may have redef redefined it, but I think... Uh, no, I haven't redefined it. I'm saying you guys about. have redefined it. <laughs> okay. I'm knowing it. You, I, my definition of Dirac fermion, Maturana fermion, here presented, is the exact definition given in any quantum field really textbook where yeah. it doesn't refer to the, the other quantum number content of the two, two spinner components inside. Yeah, so where in the definition of Dirac Fermi and Maturana yeah, so Fermi the, that I, has I, been used at all? No. I keep asking you which textbook you are reading. <laughs> I'm saying quantum field theory textbooks. Okay, yeah. not standard model textbooks. Point number one, and then we can go back and check. We can check, sure, <laughs> we can check. Oh, by the way, the third one you see the M, uh, M, M is a Hermitian. The sort of here, or symmetry. M is actually real. It, it, here, here is real. So this is just one generation. No, no. No, this is one mass, one mass term, one, one mass single term. mass term. I'm talking about here. Here I'm talking about a two by two matrix, two life and Fermi, which can match to two mass term like that, or one Dirac mass term. I guess what you mean is that in the traditional sense it's about existence or empirical global charges. No, the way I say that, <clears throat> what symmetry you have in the model is exactly equivalent to what is the Lagrangian density of the model. You don't, you, you don't arbitrarily prescribe symmetry to the model. <laughs> Down, if you write down Lagrangian density, you can read from the Lagrangian density what is the symmetry. Okay? Yes. And you and 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 saying the Lagrangian density have more symmetry than what you can read or from, from from the mathematics is an empty statement. Saying it has less symmetry, of course, is self self contradictory. Yeah, I think I think that's precisely what you misunderstand what this uh, symmetry of the Lagrangian should be defined. Hmm? Well, I think it's precisely because you have a misunderstanding of the symmetry, it should be defined uh, when you have a Lagrangian. You don't have a Majorana uh, 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 mass uh, tying in the New York sense, but then you talk about the no uh, 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 Majorana uh, uh, ten, and then it's uh, totally different than what people are talking about. No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm here talking not about the fluid of Lagrangian density, I'm just talking about one single Fermi master. Yeah, so no, 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 so you're just talking about the Dirac mass, of course, then there's no Mariana mass at all. What is it? So when you're talking about the Dirac mass, you, you, you can uh, uh, play linguistic if you say, well, okay. it's a part of okay. that. Uh, okay, okay, let me jump all the way forward. Mass. Let me all jump all the way forward and show you this thing. I'm writing here, this two, Maturana Fermi. Okay? And two metronome Fermi master, except that these two mass are exactly the same. Okay? Yeah, that's a Dirac mass in the New York sense people define. Well, but that's two legitimate Maturana master. Why is it not? That's not the New York Majorana mass people, uh, Majorana particle people are talking about. That's what I'm saying. That's not what people mean by I know, I know what I know what people mean by what they talk about, but okay, let me okay. Yeah. So you, you you just misleading us to say well my own particle, my own particle, but then you have to talk about what are people really talk about my my own particle. That, that's a that's an objection I have. No, I was about to tell you what people exactly talk about. I'm just saying that definition is beyond standard quantum field theory definition of Maturana and Dirac Fermi. Okay? 
standard quantum field free discussion about fermionic field. What is a Dirac Fermi? What does a Maturana Fermi? What does the Lagrangian density look like? Has no zero reference to what are the charges are carried by this fermionic field. Okay? Yeah, I think I'm really, really, just go, ahead, go ahead and let me now, see what the... Now, this is just pure mathematics. So you, you write it as, you, 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 you expand it in terms of two fermions. Now I'm just doing your three locations. As given by here, I can rewrite it this way, and this is exactly one Dirac Maxwell. So mathematically, this and this are exactly equivalent. That's my statement. Yeah, this is how people it's define... It's a very similar mathematics. Dirac particle. This is how people define Dirac particle. Well, I think... But your definition of Majorana is a kind of a four-component spinner that's self-conjugate. Yes, that's, that's the quantum field free textbook definition. So I guess usually you just say two components. Spinner. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but, but, so, so yeah. That, but this is one, the core can is exactly one round spinner. The corn can is exactly one round spinner. Now, people, people's definition. Now that's what I was about to say, right? So, if this is the structure, again, of course, we're talking about you don't have Psi psi and chi chi mass term, only psi chi. And if this guy is from the part of the doublet, this is from the singlet, we call that Dirac. We call that Dirac neutrino. On the other hand, if these two, they don't have to be the same, but say one is a muon neutrino, the other is a tau neutrino. They're both standard model neutrino, only they're both coming from doublets. If I happen to have a mass structure like this, so I don't have M. Uh, Mu nu mu nu, I don't have m mu tau mu tau, I only have m mu nu mu tau. Well, apart from the fact that these two are both from a doublet, which, which is broken already, while this is one from a singlet, one from a doublet, the mass structure, the mass term structure look exactly like the same. But in the usual terminology, this would not be called Dirac neutrino, this definitely would be called Maturana neutrino. Two metron neutrino, mass degenerate, but not one Dirac neutrino. That's the usual, usual picture. You, you, what usually people means, and of course they that picture followed directly from the the uh, like things like quark sector and charged electron sector, where you don't have a similar potentially conflicting statement because metron mass are not admissible at all. Okay. And so this part we shouldn't agree, right? So, come. Mm -hmm. so far, so good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's, it is, it, 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 it is, I consider important to pay attention to to that subtle detail there as I'm showing you the light like, of this mathematical light. Okay. In fact, when I first talked to people about having a mass structure like that, you know, this is like early days of when people talk about atmospheric neutrino, and you have what? Maximum mixing? Well, that's exactly maximum mixing, 45 degree rotation. Okay? So it's reasonable, completely reasonable in those days to think about uh, having a mass structure like that. And in that case, what would be the anti particle of muon neutrino? The tau neutrino. Why not? in the Dirac language. Okay? But of course, people don't like it. Like, I think including some papers. Some papers uh, 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 talk about it like that in the early days, but uh, not yes. anymore. Yes, actually, actually I, after talking about that for a while, I, I actually found one paper in the early 80s by Wolfenstein. Yeah. Not talking about muon neutrino, I mean, neutrino and tau neutrino, electron neutrino and muon neutrino. And he was exactly talking about such a mass structure problem. Possibility, okay? Yeah, but that idea, I, I think, uh, so but when I talk about this to people, but you know, people people feel like I'm crazy. Yeah, that is okay when you go out of the standard model. But then if you implement implemented this into the standard model, then you will have you will, you will have a problem. What problem? The 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 gauge interaction, W interaction in connected uh, U and the tau uh, uh, is a, a, a different because of the, the charge of the tower. Uh, Cannot uh, uh, do this um, 
uh, particle and a particle uh, thing anymore. So you saw the W detection with uh, uh, tower neutrino and the tower would define uh, this different than the uh, no, no, no. nature. No, no, no. <coughs> They cannot really form a doublet. Yeah. They don't form a doublet. <coughs> These two guys don't form a doublet. Come on. Yeah, I think that new tau and tau cannot form a doublet. They can form a doublet, of course. That's exactly what I'm thinking from here. Why not? No problem. So, uh, now what is your spectrum? You want to start it from the standard model? And then you want to pair this uh, uh, two up? Uh, no, 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 of the, course. Of the, course. The, that, that, symmetry. That's what I'm, uh, I said. When you do uh, as standard model, then you, you have no, no, no. Okay. to implement this idea. That's one. I have an L mu. Oh, no. I have an L mu, which of course is mu1. Uh, the usual way of writing it. I have L mu, which of course is mu one neutrino, mu one, and I have correspondent L tau, and I can write this dimension five operator. You put in the Higgs vacuum expectation value, you get that mass. And then you don't need to go, go, go tau, it's just mu itself, you can do the same job <laughs> already. Why do you need to go, need to go, go tau? You need to go mu itself, if you're well, talking about this. Of course, but, but this is in standard model location. I'm using standard model yeah. so that gauge invariant under yeah. standard model gauge symmetry to write the operator for you then and show you how you can get yeah. the mass of then, then you don't need to go so tau. So it's consistent with standard model, you, you but it's not. Yeah. Then you don't need to go to tau, just the, uh, L mu, L mu, you, you can do the same job already. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. But then, but then here, okay. I'm here, then you have this uh, uh, global quantum number. You can look at uh, the Lagrangian, then you can distinguish a different. Uh, the global uh, quantum number is not part of the standard model Lagrangian, it's an accidental symmetry. <coughs> okay, so I think we should have been. Right, I don't know how to handle this situation. But, uh, <laughs> 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 not trained for this. <laughs> Well, we can agree to disagree, and I can go on. Uh, okay. If, if you allow me. Yeah, I, I, okay. I should have the cube my mouth and shut it. I mean, that's absolutely I have all. Okay. Uh, okay. So, well, we actually say a lot of what is in your here already in the discussion, so I guess we can skip most of that. Uh, There is one thing I personally find a little bit interesting too. What if I start writing down two Madrona four spin, and then I write down Madrona four spinner mass terms, which only couple the two. No, so I don't have a capital psi m capital psi m or capital phi m capital phi m. Only have a capital psi m capital phi m. Okay, and if I do that, I'll still have two by two Madrona mass matrix for Madrona four spinners, and I can diagonalize it. It's still it's still forty five degree rotation. But here my m's are real and positive, but my mass hiding value will be plus or minus m. No unitary notation can take away that sign for you. Okay, but if you do it with start with the two spinner form. Uh, that, the story there is actually very different. You can get to real and positive mass eigenvalues. Okay? Uh, more interesting than, than that, I'm showing you explicit mathematics here. So, generally speaking, of course, I should, in this two string of form, I look at all this mass term. Generally speaking, I, can, I should think about them as being complex. So, this mass matrix is complex symmetric. The complex mass symmetric complex symmetric mass matrix is actually diagonalized by this location to get new and positive hiding values. It's U transpose U, not U decade. Okay? And exactly for that reason, well, you can get to the general mass hiding value, real and positive, so I show you explicitly the mathematics here. Here M is complex, I have a magnitude and a phase, and this would be the mass hiding states. I, get, I write a phase here, 
two because the phase in, is important. You cannot take an arbitrary phase location and still maintain it to be mass eigenstate. And you cannot take linear combination of mass eigenstate to give mass eigenstate. Why not? Because it is this location. The U transpose U would not cancel out, unlike U there. OK? So I'm saying I can take an M, which is proportional to identity. You think about putting identity here. U transpose I U is not identity. OK? That's, That's why what the people call it the Mayana phase. Yeah. That, why, why do you make it such a big deal? Like, so everyone it's not a big deal. It's yeah. a Mayana phase. It's right? not a big deal, but, but at least for me, before I explicit well all the mathematics, I didn't realize this. OK? Uh, no. So I'm pretty much done on that part. Uh, the, 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 the punch line, as I mentioned, is really, really all in this single slide, simple equation showing the mathematical with preference between these two. Uh, when you simply think about this Majorana spinner or Dirac spinner as the four spinner reading in quantum field field textbooks without specifying are the quantum numbers for the uh, for the two spinner contents? Okay, uh, and of course. But at this point, can I ask it from the point of view that <coughs> for gauge theory, you don't need a Dirac spinner per se. So, what does this throw light on that statement? That gauge theories are naturally made for. Vial spinners. Let me yes. not enter the Dirac yes. Majorana debate. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Vial spinners yes. are sufficient. That was much So now you, you make, a, mm -hmm. as far as I could tell, there may be some semantics between two different entry points. Mm -hmm. But in your language, mm -hmm. <coughs> you're, you're, you, you, I, I don't quite get it. You're saying that <coughs> you're, you're interpreting what our Dirac spinner is in terms of Majorana spinners. But uh, <coughs> QED and QCD are vector. So it's a mystery to some degree. So does this no, not actually, no, it's, not, it's not so much of a mystery at no, all. No, mystery but in the sense that gauge theories are naturally built for bio oh, No, 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 actually, uh, the way I put it is, is the following. Yeah? Well, actually, I think I mentioned this thing in many of my talks. In fact, it was explicitly stated by Georgia in 1979. Georgia, I call it survival hypothesis, and the statement is the following. So, following what George is saying, if I have a gauge symmetry, I think about uh, fermions that have non trivial gauge quantum number. I can think about two kinds uh, the wow kind or the drug kind, which basically means having a pair of conjugate, uh, charge conjugate uh, wow thinness. Now, what happened for the Dirac case? For having such a Dirac pair, you the, the 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 model would admit a mass term without breaking any gauge symmetry. Then the only sensible value for the mass term is the model kind of scale. There is no reason at all for the mass to be any smaller than the model kind of scale. That's the statement by George I calling survival hypothesis. Otherwise, of course, you have that Rocky ball. Okay? So now, if they have the model cutoff scale mass, of course, they decouple the one low-energy physics, so you don't see that. Now, what if it's a chiral? If it's a chiral, the gauge symmetry forbade the mass term. You cannot have the mass term put in before you break the gauge symmetry. So after gauge symmetry breaking, you retrieve mass, like through Higgs mechanism, you car coupling, and the mass term, of course, would be naturally below the gauge symmetry's breaking scale. That's what we see in standard. Okay? And not just that, it's better than that because an individual chiral fermion, individual wild fermion with non true gauge quantum number actually has gauge anomaly. For your model to be a consistent model with the gauge symmetry, you need to have all the anomaly canceled. And that cannot be a trivial cancellation. Trivial cancellation me meaning one by one cancellation. That's exactly a Dirac pick. So, if you can have some non-trivial cancellation caught up with, within a set of uh, such wild spinners, 
Well, in the standard world case, you're talking about five different multi gauge multiplets, 15 states, with actually one, two, three, four, five, and norm, different and normally to look into it because you think about different combinations of gauge, gauge symmetry types. And you will see that the the family content of one family of a standard model is exactly that content, a minimal chiral set that has all the anomaly perfectly cancelled. So in that sense, I'll argue, the gauge symmetry predicts the fermionic content. It doesn't predict three families. So we don't know why there are three sets instead of just one. But we know why one set has that content, because that's exactly what is required by anomaly cancellation. It cannot be otherwise. So that's my answer to the question. Is that OK? And that's exactly the way I look at hierarchy problem and stuff like that, and exactly why we want to work on some sort of dynamical symmetry breaking to take care of that issue, starting with only chiral matter contents. OK? Well, that would be actually the second part of the talk. But OK, let me run up this part first. Uh, so this is like a summary, actually. Uh, so you, the best way to look at it, simple enough, as George now said too, you use the wild Fermi language only. You the Fermi, two Fermi location, think about generic mass matrix. Uh, and this will be the couple blocks that you may be interested in. If it happens that you have a, a diagonal block, the couple of them or others, that diagonal block, of course, will come to the symmetric. It is a metron mass matrix in that language. If you have a pure off diagonal block decoupled from anything else, you can call that a Dirac block. Okay? And of course, this description has no, doesn't care about what quantum number carried by this uh, fermionic states here, especially not the quantum number that we have, uh, which corresponds from from some symmetry that is blocking anyone, okay? Uh, yeah, so that's the, the kind of statement here. And if you look at it that way, a pair of degenerate metron has been a really, really exactly equivalent to a development. However, uh, let's look at a free family standard model case. So now I really look at complete six days, free from the doublet, free from the singlet. It could be charged lepton, it could be quarks, or it could be neutrinos if you want to put in free singlet neutrinos. And then you can write the mass matrix as, as in terms of three by three blocks. So this would be the doublet, doublet block, doublet, single block, single, single block. And if you have the case that ML and MS, the diagonal blocks are exactly zero, then you have only one of diagonal block, only the doublet, single coupling, and of course, that is the Dirac mass case only. And that's exactly the standard model case because after the electric weak symmetry breaking, you still have what? You still have QCD as a good symmetry. You still have U1 electromagnetism. You still have electric charge conservation. And electric charge conservation makes sure, or color conservation too, make sure these two blocks are zero for the case of quarks and charge vectors. That's why the neutrino case is tricky, because for the neutrino case, neutrino has no color. Neutrino has no electric charge. So nothing, nothing is there to ensure that this two has to be zero. Well, of course, you, if you insist on in putting in something like that for number and stuff like that, then you can do it. Okay. Otherwise, there is nothing keeping you from zero. Now, uh, let me also refer to the ground statement about the neutrino-less double beta decay. Neutrino-less double beta decay. Well, think about this as a neutrino mass. And the first state would be nu yi. So I have a 1 1 mass entry here, which is the nu yi, nu yi mass term. OK? Uh, or you, you can think about not necessarily this 6 by 6 block. You can think about, say, if I have a heavy, huge entry on this ms block, then I diagonalize it and look at the three light states. OK? And I'm, I'm not diagonalizing to individual mass eigenvalue. I'm just talking about diagonalizing this block structure to get it into diagonal block structure. 
and if you have this lower diagonal block being at the heavy scale, the higher di diagonal block would be light. Actually, it, it, it is essentially what it is. It's essentially m d squared over m x. That's the so famous seesaw mechanism. And in that case, the neutrino that's double beta decay took one and only one entry of this mass matrix, the one one entry. I agree, but like this, but then when you talk about the neutrino that's double beta, the mu mu tau tau, like so. That's just mean, uh, so uh, neutrino that's double beta decay took See. any new e new e. Yeah. So then, in, in, in fact, in what people really understand what is about my arm neutrino, oh, my arm particle is uh, any one of the m l m s. Uh, not a zero, then this particle must have a my own nature. It, yeah, that's my statement. Okay, so, I told you already. Yeah, so yeah. then if you're doing that, then you the, the come back at that, like George, what George pointed out, uh, this is uh, you know, what you have discussed is uh, just uh, about semantics. So uh, they're just uh, talking about the different uh, 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 the definition. Different no, 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 no. The physics uh, nothing new. Uh, no, I haven't seen No, I didn't claim anything new here. Mm. I'm just reviewing, reviewing all this thing for you guys and hopefully uh, showing some of you uh, some of the ambiguity and subtleties in, in, in those pictures behind, especially when you don't insist this language that I'm talking about, you don't put into consideration the other quantum number correspond to, let's say, SU2 quantum number specifically. After all, SU2 is a block in symmetry at this level. Why do you care about SU2 quantum number? Okay, and there could be not just doublet and singlet. There could be other doublet, other triplet, other singlet, triplet, or any other SU two representation. Then what? Then what is what is called Majorana? What is called Dirac? If you ask me, that's a that's a weird terminology. Okay, but of course you should. Yeah, if, then, then, if you project Dirac and charge positive charge electrons, then then we are on the same same sort of uh, uh, same understanding of what it might be. Yeah, but as I tell you, when I first talk about like a mass term for new D new tau, I got people completely objecting like like as, as when I'm talking about something crazy. So yeah, that I think that's just uh, you have been talking about a different language, and then finally they come out. Uh, no, I think it, it's sort of different language, mm -hmm. but I have to insist we have to choose our language wisely, not use misleading languages. And as physics evolved, typically we distort our earlier languages. And sometimes we did start it to an extent that is, is really, at least literally, completely misleading. And in that case, I think we should actually modify the terminology. Wow. Uh, okay. Maybe you are right. But then they, people, uh, people are doing that, they know what that, that really means. Well, really, if you, not, if you, not, you, well, if you like to try to interpret it the other side, sort of, sort of, <laughs> then you're right, then you interpret it the other way of what's from language wise, it's okay. But then it's not the physics. Oh. Okay, I suggest the uh, Shogun by Otto appear and we should wind down the topic. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, we're yeah, supposed to have a second part actually, which I, well, I'm, I can pick up between the three actually. Uh, but uh, what I want to say is, in my opinion, at least, uh, was not very clearly specified and somewhat distorted use of terminology like that, at least it got the beginner is getting very confused. Okay. So well, at least see. for that reason, I think <laughs> it's important to clarify. Oh, we can talk about that one more later. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, okay, as I say, I'm pretty much done here. Uh, I was supposed, I told you I would have the second part of the talk, I guess I should skip that now. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, it's, <laughs> we, it's a fun discussion. Okay. Uh, I have one page on this, one further page on this part, first part, okay, okay. which uh, actually not directly related to this thing. And unfortunately, this is something George most probably will not like. Oh, I see. It's again about terminology <laughs> stuff. <laughs> it's again <laughs> about terminology <laughs> stuff, and I'm sorry, I, 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 I have to say. Okay. It's not against fourth generation. It's against generation. <laughs> it's against generation? No generation, please. Now. What I want to say that we talk about three families of standard model families. Why three families? I told you that. You need to take one family together to have anomaly cancellation. That's the theory part. However, as we all know that, the mass hiding state, for example, up and down quad 
mass hiking state up part, mass hiking state down part, it cannot be put in an SU2 doublet. You take a mass hiking state up part, the SU2 partner is not a mass hiking state. The SU2 partner is a mixture of the mass hiking state down, strange, and bottom. Why do we say the up and down is one in one family? Well, that's actually somewhat arbitrary. Yes, the SU2 partner of the U up part is mostly the down part. But that's just it. Okay? Otherwise, it's a linear combination of down, strange, and bottom. Now, what about electron? Why electron is particularly connected to the up and down part as in one family, as versus muon and tau? No. There is no, not whatsoever, there is no any connection, specific connection among electron muon and tau, the single out electron to be paired with up and down part. So even the same family grouping is somewhat arbitrary. Now when you say generations, it's even worse. Because generations imply a lot of structure. Now I have some sort of a puzzle joke here. Uh, Gao Chongwen, the other day was at our place given a seminar. It's actually a very interesting talk about this charge radius of the proton as put by electron and mu one. We talk about the electron part first, and then it go into the mu one. The interesting thing, of course, there is the proton charge radius is put by the electron and mu one experimentally give you a completely different number. But, but that's what, what, not what I'm after here. Then uh, Chong Wen made one statement when he first started to talk about mu one. So he said, OK, there we have a fat cousin of the electron, the mu one. Then he just, yeah, when come in, was like, oh, why is it called a fat cousin instead of fat brother? OK? And I jump out with uh, uh, an answer. Well, they're in different families. Okay? Now, what about the in different generation? You want to call the muon the son of an electron? Well, the electron is first generation, right? Muon the second, right? So muon now is not a, a brother or cousin of the electron, but like a son or nephew of the electron. So you want to think about that? Oh, you're you getting into all these languages again. Right? Right? As I, I say, it's language it's is important so because it's this wrong. Because a seminar. Not very precise language is misleading. I would say for the beginners, for the non-experts, when they first heard about this classification of Fermin in the generations, they will read a lot more from the generation work than that is really there. They will expect a lot more structure there. So it's very misleading in that sense. Why not avoid it? Fermin will avoid that. That's, that's yeah. I, I would just comment that I neither mm -hmm. like nor dislike. <laughs> okay. I'm glad you said that. Uh, but yeah, it is mm -hmm. picking on the map. I'm just so realized that three, you use a so lot, we you use the generation well a lot. So we have three copies, but so it's okay. a human convention to mass order them. It's roughly like Thank that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the other thing that I feel even more strongly about because I have it too much. I don't know if you guys have heard about it, but I heard too many times recently people talking about new yin, new mu, new tau, and calling them what? Flavor Huygens Day, Electro Week Huygens Day. Now, tell me what is Huygens about Flavor Day? What is Huygens about Electro Week Day? What really single out New Year, for example, what is New Year? New Year is just the SU2 partner of the electron. So the only thing Huygens there is, electron is a mass Huygens state. We're talking about an SU2 partner of a mass Huygens state. That's what these fake guys are. But now you're calling this sort of state, some sort of favor hiding state, electric hiding state, that's completely misleading. No, I, I, any linear combination of them, any linear totally combination of them has the same I'm, I'm weak interaction. The, 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 the meaning of a flavor, I guess we refer to that here too. Yeah, favor is the actually a very misleading term. That's the, the production. Part. Favor is the, the very misleading term. associated with production of uh, 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 W. So you have an electron, or it's a W, that uh, come out, uh, whatever that neutrino is called uh, the electron neutrino. That's the definition yes, of, of flavor. That's the weak eigenstate. That's what the people are referring to. Then what would be weak eigenstate for the dance sector? There's, there's no eigenstate. What would be the weak eigenstate? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so that, that's, that's my object to talk about this sort of language. In, in, in. Then what is, tell me, what is the favor eigenstate among the dance sector plots? What is the flavor of Huygens day among dance sector plots? When you define a flavor, you, you define that in some uh, um, limit of a, sim uh, a symmetry a, a level. 
when you break it, of course, and then you can. Well, you have a divine favor like that. I never see many people. What, what about quark favors? The same. So you, you no. Like, uh, we have six quark favors. Not even you, you can define generations. Okay, okay sorry. Uh, right. I think his point is that there's no. As I said already, and he said, this is a loose generalization of what we mean by eigen. Mm -hmm. There's no differential equation that you know has this eigenvalue. Yeah. So that's okay. There's nothing eigen about. But but on the other hand, it's oh, a no, 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 other so the one mine is okay, right? That's huh? precisely the I'm saying. We can uh, I can say to define the, how the neutrino is produced. That's completely distorting the meaning of the word yeah. hide. Right, right. Yeah, so then it's just behind the language. <laughs> right, right. It's saying that uh, we have accepted it as a generalization of language, such that. Mm. But but here we have a more a purist saying that. Flavor eigenstate is uh, ill-defined. Yeah, that, that, that's okay. You you really think about it. Let, uh, think about my question. What are the flavor eigenstate for the downside quarks? You want to talk talk about du, dc, dt? <coughs> but there's no color in color either. So. <laughs> but it's a, it's the same matching structure there, right? Yeah, I know. So, you're saying we adapt uh -huh. the language. So your pure is saying an eigen has to have an eigenvalue equation. There's no eigenvalue equation, but but we use the word eigen. No. So when we when we talk definite. about, for example, when we talk about we interacting eigen state, it conveys the wrong message to to non-experts as if. This, this, this three states have some special property in terms of their, yeah, okay. I, their, their I, I actual two you. interaction, I right? While you. any linear combination of them has the same actual two charge. But put it this way, what if flavor turns out to be a dynamical symmetry? Well, that's a different story. But, but then but, the but, Huygens thing may not be this guy at all. No reason to be this guy at all. Right? Then we don't know what a flavor Huygens is. We have to have that theory and work it out. We did not invent another word or language for it, and we adopted it. So you're picking on this. You don't need that kind of language at all. I don't see why you need that, that kind of language. You just use but the same language. Language you know? is based on convention. I mean, physics. You may be correct that we are. We tend to be more precise, but uh, we just adopt things. Well, yeah, I don't know. I, I, of course, I, I, I. I Perfectly understand what you guys are saying. But, but <coughs> what we by, mean by eigenstate usually means is that we have a flavor basis. I know. The mass basis is the one, you know, eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. So if that's what you insist on. But then, you know, it's a change of basis. Yes, of course. So it's just a change yeah, of basis. Right. So flavor basis you don't have an objection to. Flavor basis is, is, is okay. But, but then it's we somehow go loose and say, mm -hmm. right, you know, only the you know, there's an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian that you don't object to, but there, you know, from the, <coughs> you know, mass eigenstate, that's okay, because that's the eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. Mm -hmm. But that thing, you know, is a transformation from the weak basis, whereas a weak eigenstate is ill-defined. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, so. Uh, no, I, yeah, that's that. The other part, so I will go into that. Thank you. Oh, okay. Don't you want that? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I would say I don't know what happened today, but uh, it was quite interesting. <laughs> 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 so, uh, do we have? I think uh, Shahan can, can only go offline from here on. Any mm. other questions? I still didn't, didn't fully understand the Majorana derived language business. This one was easier. <laughs> <laughs> so any if there are other questions, I guess uh, we, we thank uh, Otto for a very heated, uh, exciting talk. <laughs>